you know, Easy's brace looks pretty ominous to see her walking around on crutches. Do, do you worry that, you know, maybe she just can't come back this year? I mean, every time someone has a, you know, uh, something that happens that's involving them, their knees, especially someone who, you know, from high school on has had, you know, some issues. Um, you know, you always worry um, how long will it take. Um, and I, I don't think anybody, everybody heals differently. I don't think anybody can definitively say, um, you know, there's no surgery involved, so, you know, we'll wait and see how she feels, and um, I wouldn't put too much stock in that, in that brace, that's more of a, just keep the weight off and keep the, um, give it the best chance to heal, other than that. One of these, I don't know if you saw it happen, if you watched the video, you know, you saw it happen, but it's just, <laughs> what can I say? Is it, is it just a sprain or something like that? Well, I mean, I don't think you, I don't think you sprain knees. I think what happens is, in, in every case, you either uh, in ISIS case, you know, you get dislocated, you know, patella. Most of the time, it involves a ligament, and the worst possible scenario is when you tear one. And there's no, you know, there's no tear, there's no, you know, but there's enough concern that we need to let it heal. However that long it takes, everybody, everybody heals differently, you know. There were some doctors last year that said Paige wouldn't play against for four months. And our doctor disagreed with that. And Paige was back way before that. So you really can't put a definitive number on how long. I think you just got to let the healing process take its course. How much do you feel for a kid like that, just, you know, hurting it and just a second being back? <clears throat> you know, it's been... Uh, been a series of things, one thing after another, um, you know, going back to uh, freshman year, you know, and, and <clears throat> you really say to yourself, how, how much have we really seen of a 100% healthy, easy foot? Um, it's been just a few times relative to how long she's been in college. And it's, it's frustrating as you see what she, what she can do when she is. And forget how much she means to us and what we're trying to do. It's just, you know, if you're a basketball player and you love to play and you're as good as she is, when you're not able to be on the court, it's just... It's gut-wrenching in, in some ways, especially when... You know, you spend all the other, all that time rehabbing to come back for what two games? Was it two games? Gino, I gotta be honest. You, usually, when you talk about these things, we see you sort of eat this one, you know, like it is what it is, and move on. But this one seems to hit you a little bit harder. Why is that? Uh, I mean, they they all they all hurt to a, to a certain degree. Um, I hate to say that, you know, because of the last two years, we've become, 
you know, almost uh, immune to, to these things because that's not the case. But um, I, I think it's, it's difficult because it's, it's not a one-time thing. You know, it, it's just something that it's piling on. It's adding one more thing to uh, to have to deal with for her, and uh, that's frustrating for obviously for her, and it's frustrating for uh, for us. But um, you know, we. We've just tried to worry about what can we what can we do that's within our control, and what can we do to fix whatever is broken. But there's just some things we can't we can't do anything about. And our and our kids are, to be honest with you, you know our kids are tired. You know, you, you take a look at our five starters. I mean, they're tired. They're physically tired. They're mentally tired as anybody would be at this point in the season, having played that many minutes and with this, you know, that constant, you know. But somehow, some way, we find a way, and we'll just keep doing that. You know, you've kind of seen everything at this point in your career. I'm wondering, when you go through the season, <clears throat> no matter how successful they are or are built to be are you are coaches always kind of mindful of you never know what's around the corner i mean i ask that because you guys have gone through some bad luck the men's team has come back to earth a little bit you just kind of it was only a few weeks ago when we were sitting here talking about it's the basketball capital of the world again <laughs> yeah 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 and and that's that's one thing you learn um if you're in this business long enough um because from, I could probably say from 1985, 86, my first year here, till '97, I don't remember a kid getting hurt. So you start to become, you know, you feel like you're invincible. Like here's our team. And this is how it's going to be every day for six months. Because it's like that for so long. And then, you know, the Shea thing in 1997. I didn't realize at the time that that was kind of like <laughs> payback for all the years when, you know, we didn't have any issues. But you do learn. You, you just got to be willing to, to go on to the next thing with whatever you have, you know, uh, it's almost become like golf, you know, you play five days a week, if you could, and all five days, you swing, you think you swing the same, but the ball goes five different directions, you can't understand why, and you just got to try to figure out how do I play with what I have today, and this has become, what do we have today, who's at practice today? What can we get done? Who's available for tomorrow's game? How do we win tomorrow's game? Can you and your staff relate to anything Dan and his staff might be feeling? Like you just get caught, kind of caught in a cycle sometimes and trying to fight your way out of it. You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and again, that's, I don't want to speak for them. Yeah. They certainly have enough experience to, to, to know what, what, what the deal is. Um, uh, you know, they play, they play in a league where every possession is a foul. So it's, it's hard to look like the basketball team that you are. Big East always has a reputation of being a very physical league and this and that. Well, that's all well and good, but when you watch on TV, relative to some other where they actually can play basketball as opposed to, you know, you have your choice, every possession. Should I grab them, push them, punch them, 
tackle them, what should I do? Because you're going to do one of those things, and sometimes multiple of those things. And changes how, how your team reacts and how they play. But it's part of the growing process, too, in that what's Danny's been here, what? This is fourth year? Fifth year? <clears throat> to go from where we were to where they were three, five, four weeks ago. In that amount of time, in today's world, with people coming and going, it's pretty damn good. And I don't think anybody thought that it would just keep going in that direction without any, any sort of, you know, comeback. And, you know, I think you just remind yourself all the time. You know, three, four weeks ago, we were 14 and up. And maybe we weren't as good as 14 and up. But we certainly aren't as good as our last aren't as bad as our last six games. That for coaches is a hard balancing act. It's hard. It's hard as shit. Because when you're 14 and 0, your kids feel like play anybody. We'll play anybody. Anywhere, anytime. And just like that, you know, you feel vulnerable. You feel, you know, Best word I can use. You, know, you, you just feel vulnerable. Well, it's funny. I told him yesterday. It was like 3:30, and we had been gone for like 20 minutes. Now maybe we've been going about a half hour, 45 minutes max. It was 3:30. I said, you know, if this was a long time ago, we practiced till six today. And we wouldn't take a break. And we would go so hard that it would be impossible for anybody to match that pace. So, but that's ancient history. Those days are those days are gone. Those days are over. So our practices over the last however number of years have changed. And I thought it was an interesting comment by Stan Van Gundy and, and I think Kevin Durant agreed with him when Stan said you know, we used to practice really hard, we used to go long, you know, people build up their bodies to do all that and, could, you know, last an 82-game season and la, 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 la. And Kevin said, I agree. So maybe, you know, all this data that you have and all this stuff that, that you have, maybe it's counterproductive. I don't know. But I think back then people took time off too. People didn't have personal trainers. People didn't have, you know, their own gym to work out in every day during the summer. They took time off. And they were ready to go when they came back in September. Man, I can't wait to play. And even when you gave them a day off, they would go over to Guyer Gym to find a game. Because they just had to play. They just had to play. Times have changed, I guess. But I would stand. I wonder sometimes. You know? It's like, it's like Secretariat, right? If you, if you remember the story, common, common practice was between the Preakness and the Belmont, you rest the horse because it's the longest race coming up. It's taxing on a two-year-old. And so they tried to do that. Jog them, walk them, day off. And he rebelled. And finally the trainer said, I got to tell you, this horse wants to run and wants to run hard. And that's how he trained. And you saw what happened. Now, that maybe that's a you know, case that doesn't matter, but there's something to be said for that. S some people need that. Like, you don't know who, though, but I just, I can't explain it. There's more precautions taken now to prevent injuries <clears throat> than ever in the history of of college basketball. 15, 20 years ago, none of this was going on. Zero. All 
all this data that you have, all these exercises, all these physiologists who can tell you, you know, how much pressure is on the fifth metatarsal when you make this cut. They could tell you anything, how to jump, how to land, how to do it. They have every data you can imagine. We used to just go by, what did it look like? So it's not that coaches and athletic trainers and strength and conditioning, and nutritionists, like all this stuff that you have. It's not that they're, you know, as a matter of fact, we're doing more for, for players than we've ever done in the history of the game. So how do you explain it? So you get back to Carl's question over the next... Uh, will you push them harder, or will you try to give them a little well, bit of a I, I, could, I could push them harder <laughs> if I had 10 of them. And if I didn't like how hard this one was going, number eight would come in and go harder. Now, if I don't like how hard this one's going, <laughs> practice is over. Because <laughs> that's it. That's all we got left in the tank. So... And I'll tell you the other thing. This team, unlike some teams I've had, this team has earned our trust. The coaching staff. We trust these guys. We trust that if we tell them we're practicing 15 minutes today, they'll go 15 minutes, they'll stay after and get some shots up, and then they'll play their asses off tomorrow for 40 minutes. Because that's what they've shown us all year long. So if I didn't trust them, I would maybe treat it differently. But because I trust them, and I know that if I give them time to recover and if I give them time, they're not going to abuse it and come in and sleepwalk through a game. So. Do you think it could help your team long term that some of these other players are getting to play now at the end of the year if, if you get AZ and everybody back? Yeah. That's the plan, right? Yeah. Except I'm going with... This might be what we have yeah. in March, right? So the the, the actual uh, tangible right now is we need Yana back, who hopefully tomorrow will be full contact. Hopefully. She's been practicing the last couple of days with no contact. So hopefully Yana's back. Well, not tomorrow's the game. Sunday maybe. That Amari can continue doing some things that gives us productive minutes. And Nash has been out a couple of days because I'm not sure whether they tested her for strep throat, for flu, for COVID. Lyme disease. Tested her for everything. She came up negative. On everything, except she couldn't get out of bed. She was sick and tired. And she's at practice today. She says she feels better. So we need those three guys, Nesh, Amari, and Yana, to come in and add a little bit of stability, a little bit of, like, maintain. They don't even have to come in and give us the lead or expand the lead. They just got to come in and be solid. Seven. So, so, is out. so tomorrow, tomorrow we'll know at shoot around if Yana's going to go, and if she does, then it's eight. Which I won't know what to do with all that. <laughs> is See, the, how do I get all these guys in the game? Is Nesh going to go? Yeah. Okay. Well, she's at practice today. You know. Caroline still working back. Yep. Do you know, is he going to be reassessed after a certain point? Is that like... Is yeah, like she's got two weeks, weeks on this. She's got two weeks in this in this phase. <clears throat> no way bearing for two weeks. And then we'll see what the next thing is after two weeks. So crutches for two weeks, you said? Yeah, crutches and that, that brace for two weeks. No, I should just say no way bearing for two weeks. How are her spirits? Shitty. I tried to talk to her the, other, uh, the morning after she got the uh, 
the report. And she texted me last night, Coach, I'm really, really sorry. I just had a bad day yesterday, and I didn't feel like talking. And Aze's like the nicest kid in the world. Nicest kid in the world. So, so much for having two of the generational players, right? Paige and Aze together, coming here, you know, Mantle and Maris, you know, Blanchard and Davis. Yeah, we're going to keep you around. Anybody know? Blanchard and Davis, anybody? Army's backfield. Heisman Trophy wins. So much for that, right? How many games have they played together? Not many. Not 15. I promise. 15. 15. 15. I promise I won't write that about anybody else. How about that? Right. I'll break the curse. I won't write it about anyone else. Oh, good. Maggie and I were just discussing that. 15. And you've had 36. 15 out of 54 games. 15 out of 54 games. That the two of them have been on the court together. And how many of those 15 has she been 100%? Zero. Seven. NCAA tournament. Yeah. Until when? Final game. Do you know, earlier, Aaliyah was talking about the uh, leadership role that she's been taking Who? on. Who? Aaliyah. Aaliyah? Uh, she was talking about the leadership role that she's been taking on um, amid all the injuries. What have you seen from her as a mentor, you know, that she's grown in uh, over the past season? Uh, like, I don't know how much of a talker she is in the locker room or off the court in any way. I just know that she's one of those that, by example... She's kind of letting everybody know this is what's expected. This is what I'm going to do every game. We had a long talk about it yesterday, uh, her and I. Said, you're an All-American right now. If you think about it, she's on, she's on the All-American team. As was AZ after the first four or five games. So now you see all these double-doubles that Aaliyah's doing and what she's doing defensively, how she's shooting the ball. And you say, she's, a, she's an All-American. How else could we sustain what we're doing? up to this time. You know, we got two post players almost averaging a double-double. Her and Dorf. I said, you've got to be dominant every night. Not just for for the younger player's sake or for for our sake, but it, for your sake or where you want to go. This is your junior year now. If you don't do it by now, it's not going to get done. If, you, if you're not there right now, it's not going to get done. And she's there. She's there. I mean, I know Maddie Segrist is probably the conference player of the year because that's, that son of a gun is damn good. And she has a huge impact on going over. And I think Aaliyah has that similar impact on her team. How much of that is her saying of foul trouble, too? That's been a big development. Yeah, now she only fouls our guys. Um, I think with maturity comes better decision making uh, and I think that's really really been a big big factor for her Better, she's in better shape so I think when you're late you're late to get to a spot that's when the fouls come um, she's quicker to the ball now Offensive rebounding wise, just a lot, a lot of really, really cool stuff going on with her right now. How is Caroline doing? Caroline, look at her sitting on the bench, like you know, I'm the kid at the playground. I didn't get picked. shame because you know so many kids just play the game like you don't even know why they play then you got guys like her Paige AZ Ice they live and breathe the game man the game is part of their oxygen it's who they are